Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at the Sega Dreamcast. For those that have been uh, following my videos, you uh, may have heard that I bought a Dreamcast back in January and uh, it exploded. So I had to get a new one and that's taken some time, but uh, finally, here it is. So on the top here, it's your traditional uh, top loader CD format uh, game console. So you push the open button, of course, and it opens up. Got Sonic Adventure in there right now. They were just uh, standard normal CDs, so uh, not naturally not as uh, big and powerful as uh, the PS2's DVDs. Uh, you've got this little light here, which tells you if the system is on or off. It lights up orange. Uh, looks pretty cool. Uh, there's a good sense of style. There's a few little divots and that sort of thing, but overall it's a pretty clean, smooth-looking thing. Uh, you have a power button down here, of course. Down here you have the Sega logo and of course your controller ports and uh, this was inbuilt with four controller ports which was a pretty fantastic thing at the time. Uh, the N64 did it but Sony, uh, they only had two so you had to actually buy a special add-on for uh, all the Sony systems to be able to use uh, more than two controllers so that was uh, you know one little good thing. And uh, over down here, you can see that it says compatible with Microsoft Windows CE. Now, this is a bit of a weird thing. I don't really know so much why it's on here, but uh, it's something that mainly affected developers rather than, you know, the commercial public. Basically, you could use the Windows CE framework, and uh, that's uh, you could like play certain games that were made for Windows CE. Uh, not really a big feature at all, but it's on the front of a Dreamcast, so yeah. Nothing really on the sides, as you can see, just white abyss. You have a vent over on the right side. Underneath, if I turn it around the other way, we get our usual warnings and whatnot. So, uh, testers can comply with SCC standards. I should probably mention, actually, this is the American Dreamcast. So, going back to the front, we have a red swirl um, above the Dreamcast name. Uh, on the power ones, it's actually a blue swirl. I don't. I think it was a red swirl in uh, Japan as well. But yeah, just one of those little minor changes, which I don't know why they did. Uh, but yeah, nothing too exciting back here. Just the usual stuff. On the back, then we have quite a few different ports. We have our power port. We have a serial port, and we have our AV port. We also have another little vent. And this is something that was really interesting about the Dreamcast. We have a uh, you know, telephone line input. So what you could do is you could plug in your uh, modem to the Dreamcast and use your dial-up internet. And um, this is actually a separate little adapter. So if we come down under here, and I can get out, there we go. So yeah, this is a separate adapter. Sorry and uh, it just plugs in there. In Japan you had to buy this completely separately but in the states and, the, and I'm pretty sure the power regions uh, you got it inbuilt. So uh, that was pretty nice. But yeah, so you could just plug it in and play online games, stuff like uh, Fantasy Star Online, Quake Free, um, even like with games such as Sonic Adventure you could go online and download some uh, free extra content. So uh, there was some pretty cool stuff. And they used to hold uh, leaderboard challenges and all that, so it'd be, uh, there are a few things online-wise uh, on the Dreamcast still going. Uh, for example, Fantasy Star Online, that has uh, private servers run and owned by fans, so you can uh, hook up to them and play the game. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, so that's the Dreamcast itself. Aside from that, we have our, of course, normal uh, you know, power cords, just a standard American power cord. We have our normal AV. The adapter for this is actually a little bit uh, different to the normal ones. It's uh, rather large, but anyway. We have, of course, our controller. Now, the Dreamcast controller is rather interesting. So you have the normal four button input, A, B, X, and Y. And uh, you have a this cool thing, you know, triangular start button. You have a D-pad and you have one analog stick, which feels rather good. <clears throat> so naturally, uh, compared to the PS2, you have uh, no right analog stick. 
um, or and you don't have L1 and L2 but what you do have are these two trigger buttons here and uh, naturally anyone that's used an Xbox 360 will be rather familiar with these sort of buttons so it's uh, interesting they feel a lot like in my opinion uh, the Xbox 360's triggers just not quite as uh, you know large or fleshed out but uh, it, it's just rather interesting that that design came from here strangely enough you have the power cord for or the connecting cord for the controller on the bottom so uh, it's a little bit inconvenient at first but you get used to it pretty quickly we actually built in this little divot here and the, with the idea being that you can fit the uh, little, you know, the controller in there of a cord in there, and uh, voila, it gets rid of gets the cord out of your way, and that works pretty well. It does stay in there. Then up here we have two ports. This one over here is for a rumble pack, and this one over here is for a memory card, a VMU, and uh, that's the next thing to talk about, of course. So putting this aside, this right here is the v Dreamcast VMU, stands for Virtual Memory Unit. And what you could do is, uh, well, this would plug in right here and give your Dreamcast controller a little screen on which uh, stuff related to the game that you were playing would appear. So if I'm playing Sonic Adventure, then I uh, this little chow appears on the screen and he uh, basically mimics the movements that I'm doing with the char my character on screen. So like if I'm running, the chow is running and whatnot. Uh, so, you know, just an interesting little idea, very similar in concept uh, to the Wii U. The difference, of course, is that the Wii U will be using a touchpad, so it will actually be use. It will, you know, won't just be visual feedback. It'll also, you know, you can actually use it as a system. However, if you take it out of this um, controller, what you can do is you can see you have a little D-pad, and you have an A and a B button, and uh, a sleep and a mode button, and so you could take these little VMU games from your console games. And you could put a uh, watch battery in here, or two actually, I think. And uh, yeah, you could actually take this around and play it like a little portable system. Problem is that it drained batteries ridiculously fast. Uh, you will get very, very little amounts of uh, playtime from this. But aside from that, you know, it, it serves its function as a memory card. About, it's got 200 blocks of space, so yeah, not too bad. And they're pretty cheap. At least they are now, anyway. So, yeah, that's most of that. Uh, aside from that, one thing that I will say is that if you are importing from the States, like I am, and uh, the reason you'd want to do that in the power regions is because, uh, you know, you want to get the full 60 hertz speed, uh, you want to get access to some games that you may not have access to, although, of course, you can do that uh, by burning run discs for the Dreamcast. Um, just a few little things like that. I personally also prefer the red spiral. It just seems more iconic for the Dreamcast to me. Uh, but aside from that, you basically you need to get one of these. And this is a step-down transformer. And uh, they cost about fifty dollars. And you just plug in your NTSC American cord, power cord into this, and you plug this into your normal power power supply, and voila, working Dreamcast. So just thought I'd mention that for anyone looking to import. But aside from that, that's really all there is to say about the Dreamcast. So before I head off, I might just uh, turn it on and show you the VMU and the system startup. So turning on the Dreamcast, that awful beeping noise that you just heard, that was the VMU. Apologies for the flickering on the screen. But yeah, so that's the Dreamcast startup, and uh, if you've got a game in like I do, it just takes you straight into the game. You can actually change that in the settings though. But if I go over here, you can see we have the cool lit up orange light on the Dreamcast. And uh, down here on the VMU, You can see Sonic Adventure written on the uh, little LED, you know, little screen. And uh, you know, when, when it's just idle or in cutscenes, it'll cycle between pictures of characters, or as I was saying before, yeah, like that. Or it'll go between, you know, it'll have the little shower moving about. 
Yeah, so it's not much, but it's a uh, nice little unique thing. And uh, yeah, for Wii U will be the first to try and do something similar uh, since the Dreamcast. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Okay, right, aside from that, that is your look at the Sega Dreamcast. So thanks a lot for watching, guys, and see you later.